that people are using slowness or trying to use it to find ways to listen better, connect better, and think better. In 1917, during the Russian Revolution, the Russian Revolution, of course, a time of extraordinary rapid change, everything churning and turning different and overnight things being turned upside down. Somebody asked Boris Pasternak, uh, Boris Pasternak, the author of Dr. Zhivago and a Nobel Prize winning writer, they said to him, Boris, uh, surely in this time of rapid change, we need to adapt, we need to think faster. And, and Pasternak uh, stroked his beers, uh, I'm assuming he had a beer, he was Russian and <laughs> it's 1917, uh, so it's had a little chin moment and said, no, you know, on the contrary, in an epoch of speed, one must think slowly, he said. In an epoch of speed, one must think slowly. Now, he said that just over a century ago, but I think that sentiment is as, if not more important today than it was uh, back then. Why? Because it's precisely when things are moving so fast that we have to slow down, that we have to slow our thinking down, that we have to think deeply, slowly, and wisely. Why? Because it's only by thinking slowly in that broader sense of slow, by looking at the big picture, by connecting the dots, by paying attention to detail, by thinking things over, meditating, and mulling them over, that we can make sense of this rapid change and also begin to shape, direct, and fashion it. But something else happens, I think, when we think slowly, a la Pasternak. We go even deeper than that. We start to find that we have time, space, and even the appetite to confront the big questions. You know, questions like, who am I? What is my purpose here? What, what is our purpose here? What, is, what does all this mean? <laughs> what kind of world do we want to create? What sort of world do we want to bequeath to our children and our grandchildren? And it's through a slow tackling, a slow asking of those questions that we achieve something that I think probably resembles wisdom. 